it was yesterday or the the day before yesterday that I um, was in the monk's room and just overhearing two uh, community members talking to each other, and one of them had a, a piece of paper in his hand, and and the other had asked, "What's you know what's that?" So it's my to do list, and some people you know thrive on having to do lists. Um, find it helpful for them, <clears throat> helpful just to keep their minds in check around the duties or things that have to get done or want to get done, or just reminders. I myself uh, find things like that useful as well. And sometimes I can randomly find a to-do list sitting around. I forgot about those. I just found one in my pocket. The uh, there's a you know the there's a, a darker side around our consistent need to prepare and to get something done to uh, have all kinds of activities that we we fill up the minds with you know, our minds with so it's it's really it's it's interesting to just to just kind of check oneself and uh, to see like you know what this brings up. Especially if, if if we can abandon that um, that for some time, some sort of sense of uh, these things that we need to do, we have to get done. And oftentimes we can see how how easily this bleeds into our formal practice as well. Sometimes people think about how many hours they've sat in the day, how much walking has been done. Even just now, when I when I suggested. We quiet the mind. Did you know? Did you notice any kind of attitude that you had, any intention that you had that was sort of this compulsiveness? Now it's time to practice. Sort of like when there's a suggestion. Now we're going to sit for a while. Then there is sometimes a, people start shifting their postures a little bit. Now I'm going to meditate. Get into my meditation posture. You know, but what was? <laughs> What was happening a moment ago wasn't that a meditation posture? Wasn't that a time to to be aware of the mind? And so, for myself, it's it's so easy to just slip into this compulsive mind, this compulsive way of being. Look at, at the things that I, I have to get done or want to get done, or the the formal practice not being right, and I have to do this or that, or. Um, and so, what you know what comes to mind sometimes is just that that sense of, of really just of doing nothing not not having an agenda just sometimes finding yourself in your in your own dwelling while you're alone and and just instead of kind of going with some intention of what you have to do next just just sitting there with nothing to do or your back's against the wall, or um, you're lying down, sitting at a desk. That meditation posture can even sometimes bring up so much compulsiveness in our mind that we're not we're not aware of it. If you've never actually sat down or uh, just been in a certain point where you just you just don't do anything. You don't kind of go with whatever it is you think you need to do, and you just keep resting the mind back into that place where there's there's nowhere to go, there's nothing to do. Instead of this project of I have to watch the breath now, I'm going to set up my meditation object. I have to do this. I better stay mindful. I have to be vigilant. Vigilant. And it's you know it's just this this kind of continual need to to be becoming to be something that we are trying to project ourselves to be some sort of perfect being that can't possibly have nothing to do because that's not productive that's not helpful. So 
So it's not just it's not just when we're alone, when we're in our dwellings, we can do this all the time. We can just pause for a moment and just and really have have nothing to do. And try to watch that intention to have nothing to do. Because that can come up too. Now I'm gonna have nothing to do. Don't bother me, I, I'm, I'm having my moment of nothing to do. And it, you know, it can, it can just, uh, you can, it's not necessarily that this comes up as a thought in the mind, but you can feel it. You can feel it in the body, feel it in the mind, that, in, that in sort of compulsive need to do something. A compulsive need to do nothing. And so when we, when we're, when we have that option to do that, then then there, there tends to be this, this kind of, or there can be uh, a moment of just, you know, just, ah, oh, wow, this is, it's just such a nice experience to have because the, the way that we normally uh, can experience our minds is just of, of this constant doing, this constant emotion, um, this sense that, uh, you know, what comes next? And then what? I remember many, many years ago uh, when I was first learning about the Dhamma, starting to practice, I was, I was reading some Buddhist book, I can't remember if it was a, a sutta or um, just some sort of um, Buddhist book written by an author. And, you know, I'm interested in what I'm reading. And then this, this, just this thought comes to mind, I, this, I really should be practicing. As if, you know, reading the Buddha's words or about Buddhism is not, is not practice. And so we can get very narrow in what we think we should be doing, what's helpful for us. And instead, we can keep just trying to, to come back to just that compulsion we feel to do in the first place. Just trying to, to set that down, to set that away, uh, uh, aside. So I, I definitely would encourage, um, if you ever catch yourself, you know, with anything you're doing throughout the day, uh, just try to kind of to sense. Well, what if I don't? I don't have anything to do because the you know the. It doesn't mean you can't. Obviously, you're in the kitchen or something, or you're doing some task, uh, talking to somebody. It doesn't mean that you just stop. I mean, that might be a, a possibility, but. It can also just be that that state of mind that you allow. You know, chopping some carrots, but there's there's nothing to do there. <laughs> 